God has created is it's a, it's our home and yet it's 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 a gift that is not our permanent home uh, world not being simply you know the planet but this age in which we live uh, right at the beginning there, there's a sense it's it's in movement it's uh, there's a temporariness about it uh, you get more of this in the New Testament, but certainly in the Old, particularly in books like Daniel and all these, that sense about, hey, don't sit too securely in the present moment. Uh, God is busy. God didn't finish creating uh, after the seven days of creation. God continues to create and recreate, continues to pull down and build up. So maybe a skill of people worshiping the God of church in Israel, maybe one of the skills we have to have is to not uh, sit too securely in present arrangements. I sometimes say um, <clears throat> I'm active in a, a, a thing here in town, homeless uh, with meals, et cetera. And um, I say to people working in that ministry, I think it's important to realize, uh, to keep telling yourself, hey, God did not create Durham. <laughs> we did. We set up these economic uh, structures. We put all this together. This may not be what God ultimately has in mind. In fact, in numerous places, thank you, Jesus, uh, it is said, hey, uh, don't be too impressed by these great, big, substantial, heavy stones at the temple. This is going to be torn down. And the disciples uh, take that as a shock. Uh, so I'm thinking it may be one of the things required as a, of a Christian is uh, to not put all our eggs in this basket, to not say, well, here is what is and what shall always be. Uh, but to be open to the dismantling, the reconstruction, the death and birth that happens when you have a living, busy, active God. The night I was ordained, the bishop chose as his text from Hebrews, and in that translation, it was something like, here we have no abiding city. Here we have no abiding city. And he, that's what he preached on. <laughs> and he talked about Lewis, Lewis Mumford's book, uh, then current on cities and all. Looking back, I've wondered, I wonder why the bishop chose that text. Uh, here I am, 23 years old, just starting out my ministry. Well, as I thought about it, maybe the bishop was trying to say to me at the beginning of my ministry, hey, kid. Uh, work real hard, uh, try to be faithful in your ministry, but don't be deceived by that eternal-looking neo-Gothic church that you're working out of. It's built to look 500 years older than it really is. <laughs> it, the, it's got heavy furniture. The pews are bolted down to the floor. But let me tell you, it ain't eternal. You're not eternal. It's not eternal. And so, therefore, that becomes an important truth. Um, sometimes people will talk about their legacy. What is your legacy? Uh, what? what uh, well, uh, that's a fine question to ask. I, on the other hand, sometimes that implies it is possible to live your life so that you build stuff that lasts that you are able to construct something through your efforts that you get to pass on to another generation. I think scripture says, uh, no, there's, there's really nothing eternal that's human. <laughs> there's nothing eternal about you or any of your creations. That may be a hard truth to hear, but, but only a hard truth if you're under the delusion that we are eternal. As the last pope said, uh, only God has a future. 
Uh, only God does eternity, immortality. Therefore, I think it's a Christian claim. The only hope I've got of being eternal, I mean, look at me in my present ravaged, aged condition. Uh, you, you can tell that there's not much eternal going on right now. Uh, well, the, the only hope I have in life, in death, in life after beyond death, is God. That somehow my little frail mortal passing life will be hitched on to God's eternal life.